This is 88.5 FM. I'm Andy Chanley, and I've interviewed hundreds of people in my life. This is the first time I've interviewed a movement. <laughs> <laughs> We're here with members of the, uh, the so-called uh, Paisley Underground, and uh, joining me is Steve Wynn. The casino magnate? No, don't do that. No, not no. that. No, no, no. Please, please don't. <laughs> Different please person don't. entirely. You got off on a bad foot. <laughs> Steve Wynn. We're still friends, but watch it. <laughs> Steve Wynn of the Dream Syndicate. Different person entirely. Uh, Danny Benair. Yes. Uh, fan club president for Tagus, the Swedish uh, band. <laughs> and That's not fair. And, uh, <laughs> he said it. Our returning champion, uh, Vicki Peterson of the Bangles. Uh, good to have you hey, here. Hey, good, good to see you, Andy. Andy. Thanks so much for joining yes. us. Now, uh, for people that are uninitiated, uh, I want to get right to a song in a second, but the Paisley Underground is that... That movement of music, uh, the name that was given to the movement of music, that uh, kind of got sandwiched between punk and new wave and hair metal in Los Angeles. Um, I guess I think of, you know, when people think of the L.A. music scene in the 80s, they'll think of Gazzari's and Motley Crue right. and Guns N' Roses. Uh, tell me about the clubs you guys were playing, the anti-club, mm -hmm. and, and uh, where is that, Little Armenia? Uh, and uh, uh, what <laughs> yeah, else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cathay de Grand and, yeah. and Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Where yeah. else were you guys playing? Where, where were your stomping grounds? Club 88, the, the music, music machine. machine. We discussed that. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Whiskey and the Roxy. Absolutely. Even at, at, at a certain point, I mean, early on even, um, um, uh, the, uh, the, not the, oh, the On Club, I'm thinking yeah, of, Club. of, um, On Club we played. I, I'm, I'm blank, Al's Bar, that was, that was. Oh, yes, downtown, that, Al's Bar. That's one I'm really nostalgic about when I think wow. about Al's we Bar played, shows. We played the Concert Factory in, uh, Orange County. Um. That sounds fancy. Yeah, it does, yeah. It was. <laughs> it was. It was the night after we performed on MV3, which was the same time we yes, performed. Yes, And kids, kids touched us because all of a sudden <laughs> we were on TV. It was very amazing. You're a star. It you touched wow. us. If you were in any of those clubs in the early 80s, maybe you rubbed elbows with these guys. Let's get into one of these songs. We're talking about a, uh, a tribute to uh, different bands that represent the Paisley Underground. And we uh, have the Bangles, Dream Syndicate, Rain Parade, and the 3 o'clock doing a few songs each of each other's on this new album that's out now. Let's hear one of the tracks that you guys have done for us. This is When You Smile from the Days of Wine and Roses album. It's the Rain Parade covering the Dream Syndicate on 88.5 FM.
Doesn't take much to hold Possibilities back to do lose myself in a minute or two it seems like the end of the world when you smile when you smile I don't know what to do I lose myself in a minute or two it seems like the end of the world When you smile It seems like the end of the world When you smile That's when you smile from, uh, probably, would you say, Steve, uh, of the Dream Syndicate, would you say that's the, the album that people recognize most from uh, your, the heyday of, of the Dream Syndicate? Probably, if, if you had to pick one, yeah, the Days of Wine and Roses is the one that is, yeah, is our... One you're most proud of, perhaps, or...? <clears throat> I like them all. And I know that's, a, that's a, people just say that, but I like all four records in different ways, but it is the one that people connect to maybe first, I don't know, it's hard to say. Uh, Danny Benair uh, is here from uh, the, the 3 o'clock. Let me ask you this question. Um, when I think of uh, the aesthetics of other uh, you know, 80s bands, like uh, that we were talking a minute ago about uh, hair metal, I, I have a specific thing in mind with okay. uh, you know, Final Net, uh, Hairspray, <laughs> and, and so forth for some of the, the metal bands. What is the overarching aesthetic of the Paisley Underground? Is it just an affinity for 60s music? or you know, Because I hear so many different flavors when I listen to each of the bands that it seems that it's, it's you know, pretty diffuse. What, what does it conjure in your head? We only listen to Striper. <laughs> uh, you know, I think, you know, I think what happened was is that every, uh, like, you know, I, I came in right at the end of Salvation Army 
And as I say in the notes, I say I would have been a fan of every one of these bands, including Salvation Army, because I loved, I, I was buying the records. I, I owned the, I bought the first singles and, you know, I was very passionate about it. I think it was like, you know, walking into a room and stumbling upon people that were so like-minded that didn't have exactly the same taste, but you could actually talk to them or you could say, have you ever heard this song? And they'd go, no. And and that was one of those things where I think uh, it was sort of exciting to see like-minded individuals each taking their own slice of a of a pie of a certain period and making it their own. Danny Benair of the 3 o'clock. We're also joined by Steve Wynn of Dream Syndicate and Vicki Peterson from the Bangles here on 88.5 FM uh, talking about the Paisley Underground Band. Let's hear a song that you did, uh, Danny. Uh, this is Getting Out of Hand, a Bangles, excuse me, Bangs mm -hmm. song, actually. I looked up online. Bangs era. I looked up <laughs> online, Vicki. Do you know that uh, original... 45s of this are going for $400? <laughs> wow, it's gone up. Yeah. Awesome. I have one. I get have a in, couple. Get into the attic. Yeah, time to, uh, to go get those on eBay. All right, so this is Getting Out of Hand. It's the 3 o'clock on 88.5 FM. out of hand that is the three o'clock doing the bangles song you'll find it on the three by four album that's just come out and we'll tell you more about that in just a couple of minutes uh vicky I, last time i talked to you uh you and the bangles were doing a show down at uh, pershing square kicking right. off last summer and i think I, it was you that i brought up the rodney bingenheimer um documentary the mayor of sunset strip because it's such a, a great photograph of the late 60s and the 70s music scene in Los mm -hmm. Angeles, all that Sunset Strip uh, and everything it had, had to, to go with it. Pick up the story in 1981. What's the, the L.A. music scene um, feel like as you're just starting to get into it? Well, just because you mentioned Rodney, I'll, I want to point out and continue that thread. And, and 
say that Rodney was the first person who ever played the bangs on the radio. Really? I think it's also true for the 3 o'clock, is it? And Dream too. Syndicate. Definitely. <clears throat> and probably Rain Parade as well. Not We don't have a... And, and my first band, The Quick. Really? The quick, first yeah. time I ever heard myself on the radio. For people that don't know, for, for, for yeah. another generation that are just listening to this, uh, my friend Chris Carter did, yes. uh, you know, of Drama Rama did the, uh, the documentary on him. Rodney was such a gentle soul. And still is. And still is. And never, never, he is still on the air, and he has never been in the music industry for himself. No. He's someone who just delighted in being around you guys and sharing your music with people. And that's why when he did this documentary that Cher and David Bowie and everybody said, I'll do it, I'll sit down for him, uh, because they realized that he was in it for the love of yeah. the music. How important was that to have a champion on the radio oh in market Huge. number two to Huge. help you? Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. And Huge. you know it's real. It is real with Rodney. It absolutely is. And he was such a champion um, definitely of the bangs. He had us come in. We took over his show a couple of times. Um, and just, you know, just knowing that on, you know, Friday or Saturday night, you might hear your own band on the radio. It was phenomenal. And Rodney was that guy. And he was that guy through the entire run, you know, and we had him introduce us, you know, in, in 2000 when we played at, you know, on the Sunset Strip again, because he is a part of history and he, and he still is to this day. You know, and he's he's just a huge um, heart and soul of of LA music. He he's the guy who he put things together. I mean, we you, you know it's it comes up in the documentary, but yeah, lots of love to Rodney. And we we actually name checked him earlier t today when we were recording here in the studio and said Rodney should be here. This is crazy. Oh yeah, you know? should, yeah. it's Godhead. <laughs> it's yeah. Godhead. It's Godhead. Godhead. Let's play another song Actual from this. Actual Bengals. Actual Bengals. All right, Rodney. <laughs> This is off the 3 by 4 album. I want to do uh, Hero Takes a Fall. Now, this is you, Steve, uh, the Dream Syndicate, covering this song of the Bangles. But uh, Little Birdie told me that this song was actually perhaps inspired by you. Do you want to elaborate on that at all? Sure, huh? because, cause I, because it's, it's, it's a... In, uh, there is a, no truth that I can figure out on this one, but as far as I was told back then when it came out, um, the, the scuttlebutt was the song was about me. And uh, I've been, since we made this record, and, and I think the reason, first of all, I love the song, and the reason the Dream Singing covered that song on 3 by 4 is partially because we had to, I mean, because <laughs> the song is allegedly about me. And I've been told since then by... Actual, ba actual, actual bangles, Bengal writers. Actual Bengal writers <laughs> that the song is composite, and 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 it's actually I'm part of the inspiration, but it's a composite. And I have to say, even though this song is a brutal takedown of somebody <laughs> too big for their britches, even though this song has very pointed pointed commentary about the the protagonist's connection to his mother and and psycho fans, uh -huh. even though it wishes maybe this person be taken down a few pegs. I'm a little disappointed the song isn't about me. <laughs> I never said it wasn't Vicky? about you. It yes. was, I never said it was not about you. It's well, thank I'm God, so, God it's not because, about me. Because, because I'm so vain, I probably have thought you the probably song think the song is about you. It's a non-denial denial. Uh, make up your own minds. Uh, yeah. Hero Takes a Fall, the Dream Syndicate covering the Bangles on 88.5 FM.
Devotion is a virtue For you it is the one fatal flaw Sitting on your throne, drinking, thinking She'll return your call And the story has got an end Look out, here it comes, here it comes And I won't feel sad at all When the hero takes the fall When the hero takes the hero takes the fall Hero Takes a Fall. That's the Dream Syndicate covering the Bangles on this 3 by 4 compilation of songs that are uh, tributes by different members of the Paisley Underground. And uh, I was uh, thinking about how you guys came together. Um, and I know that uh, you found certain members through ads, as many bands have done. Um, like you guys, Vicky, you, you guys found uh, Suzanne in the newspaper, right? And yeah, sort you, of in a roundabout way, yes. Steve, didn't you find someone in the recycler? Yeah, Carl Picotta, our original guitarist. Was yeah. the recycler? Was that, yes. was that oh, the it was, it was the thing. Oh, yeah. The recycler page. was the Craigslist of, of the day. It was, it was the internet of the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy, yeah. but yeah, it was. Yeah. Now, uh, going ahead, once you guys have been established a little bit, um, I've always been curious about this, and it, it never dawned on me. Um, Prince comes around once you're established and he starts seeing Bangle shows and offers you guys the song Manic Monday. Then later establishes his recording setup and uh, his label as Paisley Park. Yeah, is, mm -hmm. is, that, is that lifted <laughs> from this movement of music? Do you know? Is it related? Is it? I never asked him. Well, okay. you know, I do know that <laughs> when we put our, our first album on IRS, Arrive Without Traveling, um, he had his psychedelic album, Around the World in the Day, and, and we had a lot of couplings of reviews. Um, so I, I knew, and he saw our video, Her Heads Revolving, and I think Su Susanna Hoff told, told her then boyfriend Lewis from three o'clock that he liked the video, and um, so I think he he liked the he liked obviously liked the Bengals and I think he liked obviously the vibe and that record is sort of his his psych record and uh, he probably just the word Paisley is up for anybody to use it obviously resonated yeah. with him yeah. somehow yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Sure. Yeah, it's interesting. And he I, likes purple. I, I find it interesting then, then you lot, uh, you know, influence Prince in an unexpected way. <laughs> he, came, uh, he came to our first show in, in First Avenue, Minneapolis, like in early 83. And it was like, that was one of those first bits of excitement. Like a famous person did our show. Oh, wow. Prince. So cool. Do you know Prince is here? Like, well, really? Wow. I think he left early, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is 88.5 FM. We're talking to Steve Wynn of the Dream Syndicate, uh, Danny Benera of the 3 O'Clock, and Vicki Peterson of the Bangles. And um, Steve, I wanted to ask you, I listen to songs. I've been doing a lot of listening to back to, to some of these bands. Um, songs like uh, Tell Me When It's Over from the Days of Wine and Roses we mentioned earlier still holds up Thank so you. well. Do you think MTV just had a stick <laughs> and and didn't feel like this music was uh, poppy enough for them. It wasn't, you know, vibey enough for the Reagan generation. Why? Why do you think that uh, MTV didn't embrace the music that you were making? Because you know, in later years, there are other bands in the '90s, you know, uh, you know, Stone Roses and whatever that that had not dissimilar, uh, you know, vibes. They were playing vibey music. What's your thought on that? Did you know Tell Me When It's Over is about Red Cross? There you go. It is. No, I did not know ah, that. There's, oh there, my there's gosh, some dirt. what? I, I, will, I will just go there for a well, second because I was going to say, and we never talked about this. We never talked about this. We, uh, and I'm, and I'm, Andy, I'm sorry to skirt around. Sorry. I'll, I'll come back to this, but it, it's, a, it's a good story. That song, Tell Me When It's Over, um, very early on, we, when we were just hunting for gigs like all our bands did. We played a club called The Vex in Hollywood, and we opened for, for Red Cross. And wow. actually, it wasn't... It, it, and, um, Jeff was 14 and, and, and Steve was 11, I think. At the yeah, time. I saw that. And, and, and they were going on one, we were on the Posh Boys, 1982. And they were managed by Craig Lee, the wonderful Craig yes. Lee, um, rest God in peace. And, yeah, and, and he, 
he was managing them, and we, at that point, were kind of getting, you know, some, a, a fair amount of attention, and the, the club owner wanted us to headline, and, and Craig went to this whole diatribe, like, when you guys have paid your dues, you can headline a band like that. 14 and 11 year old band. <laughs> they paid their dues but man. he was so much and, and, and I guess this comes on this is how things were then you know for bands like us who were just coming up everyone was especially in LA would tell you this is how it is this is how you make a record this is the kind of band oh, you have yeah. to be this is how you go out and do all this stuff and we didn't know about that and in a way we all didn't care to our, to our advantage and I wrote that song you know what? Tell me when it's over. Just let me know when it's done. And that was that was inspired by that event. Oh, that's so great. So that was kind of a, and, and that, but that song was a kind of a thing where you're saying, the way we felt like we are outsiders, and yeah. this will come around out to your thing. We really, uh, at that time, we were outsiders. We were not. We you know very quickly bands like X embraced what we were doing, and some of the, some of the bands were hip to like what we were doing. But we didn't belong to anything. Didn't belong to the hair and metal scene you're talking about. Didn't belong to the punk scene, the ska scene. The mods embraced, you know, Salvation Army and Three O'Clock, but we were just outsiders. So to answer your question, as time went on when MTV started happening, and what MTV was, was just fine with the Bengals and just fine with Three O'Clock and we got played too, but I think in some ways we were remained in some way outsiders. I, I, Grant, you, I wouldn't call the Bengals outsiders. Or you had big hits, but we were kind of always throughout the whole thing flying our own flag. So there's also a situation where I think over time stuff that is on the outside gets accepted in a certain way. As you see, the Stone Roses, fine. Yeah, they did a. I heard they were very influenced by the Three O'Clock. Is that right? Yeah. Fact, Al, I, I know I know Alan McGee pretty well and yeah. uh, from Creation Records, and he's told me probably a hundred times um, that um, Stone Roses were very influenced by early 3 o'clock and Michael Corsio from 3 o'clock says he was sent uh, an original demo that they sent to Michael as fans but even recently Alan McGee told me again yeah Stone Roses were you know two bands they loved were Primal Scream and the 3 o'clock wow so, you know, so it's kind of weird let's play one more song off of this 3x4 uh, album, and this is the Bangles covering the Rain Parade off the Emergency Third Rail Power Trip album in 83. Talking in my sleep. This is the Bangles on 88.5 FM. No. 
talking in my sleep bets, the Bengals covering the rain parade. Uh, we're here talking about uh, all things Paisley Underground uh, with Steve Wynn, uh, the Dream Syndicate, and uh, Danny Benera, 3 o'clock, and uh, Vicki Peterson. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming by and sharing this with us. I, I think it's, it's so illuminating, and uh, for people that don't know about this time in Los Angeles, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of a lost chapter. It's something that I think many people um, that weren't at your shows came to after the fact yeah. and, and realized, oh, that happened. And so to have you tell these stories is really interesting. Uh, and I want to talk about this album. It's um, three by four. The name is because each of the bands do three songs by the others. The uh, Bangles do uh, three songs by the Three O'Clock, uh, Rain Parade and Dream Syndicate. Dream Syndicate uh, do three. Uh, well, uh, the others follow the 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 way it's supposed to go. Uh, Steve does whatever he wants because he's, <laughs> Basically, he's the he's hero. Steve. There we he's go. The <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Some things don't change. <laughs> <laughs> but this is uh, an infinitely fun album. It's available now, uh, so go out and uh, buy it wherever uh, fine records uh, are sold. But what's what's next? What's going to happen? Are you guys going to play these songs <laughs> out? Are you going to get together and gig? Because it really seems like you guys, it was herding cats to get you in here, <laughs> get you away from, from each other, no to kidding. break up the bands, to get you in this room. <laughs> we, we, we honestly like each other and are fans of each other and like hanging out and playing together we the only thing getting in the way is just logistics because there's a lot of us but we <laughs> we do we do want to do more things and this was great today here being in the studios here to, to be able to play music together because we just can't do it often i'm sure something will happen where we can do a show and hopefully for your listeners here if it's going to happen anywhere it's going to happen in la because yeah. most of the people live yeah. in california i think i think all but a few, the Rain Parade and a couple of Dream Snickets, we're all pretty much around here. So um, if anything's going to happen, hopefully in maybe the first half of this year, there'll be some show. So stay tuned. All right. Well, we're we'll, trying to make that yeah, happen. Yeah. It, it, the desire is there. Yes. Let me put it that way. Let us we're, know about it and we'll get the word about it and, and we'll be there. Uh, can't Great. wait for Kidding? it. Uh, Steve, Danny, Vicki, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, there you go. A little taste of the Paisley. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks so much, Andy. Yeah. It's uh, 88.5 FM.